Guten Morgen. Wir sind in Berlin, Deutschland. Die Stadt ist sehr groß. Groß, das heißt sehr. Und die Leute sind cool und freundlich. Well, I say that, but we've <laughs> literally just walked into this area and uh, already someone tried to scam us, which is nice. So uh, we're walking past and there's this woman with a clipboard and uh, and she was like, hey, can you sign my petition for like deaf and blind charity? I was like, yeah, man, of course. I don't know what a petition's for, but let's sign it. Yeah, I was like, there's no personal information here, nothing she can contact me with. So no phone numbers, no emails. I was like, yeah, sure. And then I looked and it caught my eye. I was like, interesting. It says donation. She was like, oh, donation. I was like, not at all. Not a chance. <laughs> like literally livid. I was like, das ist schlecht. That is, that is bad. Das ist nicht gut. Das ist nicht gut. That's not good, man. Not good. I'm doing that, scamming people. So yeah, unwitting tourists. I saw people from Paris and places in the USA and various other European countries that signed it and paid, but I, she weren't getting a penny of my money. So it's our first time in, uh, in Germany and uh, really excited to get started actually. Um, it's a very historical city with lots of beauty. Um, but of course where we're staying, we're outside of the tourist area. So in a separate video, we'll give you a tour of that area as well. But uh, yeah, today we're just gonna try and get as much as we can caught on camera so you can see Berlin. We show you the good and the bad if we come across it. And uh, we try to be as honest as we can as we always do. So let's get going and uh, see what we can see in this rather big city. So we're just walking through a park now and thought I'd tell you a little bit of the history of Berlin. So rather than just spit out the history again, I'm just gonna paint it as a little picture. So just imagine there's two towns. One town is called Berlin and the other town is called Kuln. I can't pronounce it, but I will spell it on the screen for you. And these two towns one day went, you know what? Not much going on around here. Do you wanna merge together? Do you want to join and glue ourselves together into a bigger town? And Köln and Berlin, they're like, yeah, let's, go, let's do it. Let's go for it. And so these two towns merge. And for the next 400 years, this little merger of two towns grew and flourished. And it was during the 17th century that it became such a big place that it eventually became the capital of the Prussian Empire. Wow, look at this. How beautiful. For 200 years, it continued to flourish. And these two towns were like, wow, this is great. I wonder what's next. And little did they know in the 19th century, 200 years after the initial flourishing of the town, the, industri the industrial revolution would hit. And with the industrial revolution came lots of work, came lots of factories, most importantly came lots of wealth so now what was these two small towns which would have been just like this really just a little field with a bunch of trees and maybe some little homesteads eventually became the german the capital of the german empire incredible from the 13th century to the 19th century there was just two towns that merged together and one day went hey let's let's join hands and become a new town and by the 19th century it was the capital of the German Empire. Now, pre-World War One, the city was very much known as a, uh, a bustling, vibrant city, lots of arts, lots of culture, and it was very much a progressive city, even back then. And uh, it was growing and growing and growing in popularity and, and really pushing the boundaries of, uh, you know, what was, what was deemed to be acceptable at the time. You know, there was lots of very good artists, both uh, from music and, you know, the arts culture, all came from Berlin. And uh, of course, we know that during the Second World War, the things happened as they did, and the sad things occurred. But then of course, 
1945 when that all came to a halt and the Soviet Union came in and reclaimed the city along with the Allied forces. It was eventually split into four sections, Berlin initially, each ruled by the Allied territories. So one part was ruled by the Soviets, one part by France, one part by the UK and another part by the US of A. In 1961, they looked around and went, hmm, this is a bit complex. How about we just stick a wall right in the middle here and divide the city in two? So in 1961, the Berlin Wall was built and the city was divided into East and West Berlin. East Berlin was controlled by the Soviet Union, whereas West Berlin was controlled by the UK, the USA and France combined. And it remained that way up until 1989, my year of birth. And on that momentous occasion, the people came together and they brought down that wall and they said enough is enough. We want a unified city. And so in 1989, the wall came down and the city came together and became the capital of Germany. Very impressive history. A very sad history at times, but nonetheless, the city has arisen through many a strife, many a trouble, and it's found its way. And now you have beautiful lush parks and you have lots of history, lots of beautiful buildings, but very importantly, the progressive nature, the arts, the culture are very much still alive here. And again, the city, like it was back in the pre-World War I times, is very much known for its bustling, progressive nature. It's a very colorful city and a very lively city. So now we know more about it, let's go and explore it further. Oh yeah, that first. Different choices here, look guys. Good morning, uh, can I ask you a card? Yeah. Uh, super, thank you. Uh, I want a currywurst with Brötchen and a bratwurst in Brötchen, please. Thank you. All right, people, so food has arrived and uh, I don't know if you heard, but we got currywurst with Brötchen. So that's basically curried sausage and Brötchen, 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 I think Brötchen. I can't pronounce that, so I do apologise, Germany. Um, but that's basically a bread roll. <clears throat> and Carl's got uh, himself a bratwurst. With uh, in a in a bread roll as well, and I got a uh, a Schwarzer Tee, Fürdisch, Fürdisch, Peach. Oh, it's fairly obvious, but yeah, Schwarzer Tee, black tea, peach black tea, iced tea to be precise. So Sam, curry verse. To be honest, we have this all the time back at home because uh, we love curry verse, and uh, we actually buy the sauce. It is from a company called Hella. Yeah. We buy it on Amazon. It's quite expensive, but it's so good. But I will try it. So let's give it a go. Mmm. That sauce is homemade. How much is coming to Sam? Nine euros each. Nine euros for all that. Eighteen euros for all that. Sorry. Yeah. Nine euros each. So. Es ist, uh, es ist ein bisschen teuer, aber es, uh, es, ist, es ist lecker. Ja, yeah, es ist lecker. What do you reckon? Lecker? Mm. Yeah. And uh, let's do this. I've had iced tea before, but let's try it anyway. Fused tea. <sighs> really refreshing. Das schmeckt gut. And Kyle and I are rocking the Coke Zero. So, I do apologise to my German brothers and sisters if I'm uh, butchering your beautiful language. Um, I'm a big fan of Germany, the German culture. I've loved it since I was a child. Um, and it's a pleasure, a pleasure to be here. So I've been to a few German-speaking countries already. I've been to Austria and Switzerland. This is my first time in actual Germany, so uh, really, really happy to be here. Really enjoying it so far. It's a little bit touristy, so we're hoping to break away. We're going to go and check out. Uh, watch out, there's a bird there. Hello, my friend. Look at that. 
<laughs> coming to join us in a meal. Um, but yeah, we're going to go and check out the uh, section of the Berlin Wall that's still left. There's a little section of it just left, uh, left that we can still see. And then there's also Checkpoint Charlie. What is Checkpoint Charlie, by the way, Carl? You know, don't you? Just basically a crossing point. Oh, uh, right. Eastern there you go. Mr. History there. I didn't know that. So, uh, Checkpoint Charlie. I remember you mentioned it the other day. I was like, what is that? So, yeah, the crossing point. And uh, I believe that was used, I, I think, a certain groups of, I think that was, uh, was that for, to I'm sure someone said the other day it's for tourists or people that wanted to visit the city or something like that. No idea. Someone will have to tell us in the comments. But, we're going to keep pushing on. We're going to have a look over there at the Reich, uh, the Reichstag? Reichstag. Reich. Reich. <laughs> Go and get that R sound. Reichstag. 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 It's very difficult. Sorry, guys. And uh, see what it's like. Hello, everyone. It's only me. So, I've left Bob and Kyle in that general direction they sat down in the shade i thought no i'll go for a walk i'll take the camera and wow this building i think it's pronounced red stack or something like that um it's i think it's like the german um government building or something like that but i'll flip the camera so you can actually see what I am looking at. Look at that. Thank you. That was very lekker. Schönen Tag. Right, so uh, we're going to head over now to the section of the Berlin Wall and uh, Tammy kindly showed us the Reichstag, the government building and uh, what a splendid building that is. Absolutely incredible architecture. So, uh, for, so far it's nice, as you can see, it's outstandingly touristy, at least in this section. So uh, I'm quite eager to break out of this area now because it can get a little bit crowded. <laughs> and uh, go and see a little bit more of the real Berlin and see what it's like. So uh, let's go. I'll tell you what, I don't know about you Tam, but I am looking forward to getting out of this area. It is full <laughs> of scammers. It's not even the tourists, man. It's the number of scammers. It's like they smell blood. It's like, it's like this, this, this little thing that Tam carries. It's like they see it. It's useful, anti-theft, because obviously we got robbed in Greece, in Athens to be precise, but um, it's it's pretty much a beacon to any scammer. Look at those naive tourists. So I kind of wish we didn't have to wear it, but we've seen quite a few signs around already that warns that you can be pickpocketed here as well. So I don't know how common it is. It's outstandingly common in Athens. So we saw we saw the sign, especially in like the um, Jewish memorial over there, weren't it? We did, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I, just, I was filming myself here. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, in there, there was a Jewish memorial, and there was a, uh, a sign which said, "You wear pickpockets." And I thought, of all places, to operate a pickpocketing scheme, there, the memorial to the Jewish people. Very, very sad, but. Uh, I guess that is the reality of the world. Scammers have no heart. Just had the strangest thing ever happen to me. I had a guy dressed in a gigantic bear costume. He was holding a little pot and uh, I, you can't make it up. This, this, this city's crazy. Gig gigantic bear costume. And he was like, I said hello to him and he obviously instantly recognized my accent as being English. <laughs> so he started speaking to us in English. And uh, he was like, in his directions and he asked us for a bit of change. I was like, I'm sorry, bro. You should have a, you should have a uh, kind girl. And he was like, oh, no problem, it's okay. And then uh, it was quite a, quite a nice moment. He was like, say hello to William and Kate for me, which I found really amusing. <laughs> so there's some cool people here, man. So I wouldn't class that as a scammer. He was probably just trying to make, make an honest living as best as he could. But uh, yeah, he was, he was a cool guy. So you get it all, but this is the station. And look at this, you can absolutely feel the history in this station. Look at this. The leaders of the GDR built a wall through the middle of Berlin, passing close to the Reichstag building. Allied reservations meant the German Bundestag was not permitted to hold 
planetary sittings, plenary, plenary sittings in the Reichstag booting. Crazy. Look at this. Unter die Linden. Under the... I don't know what Linden is, but Unter die... Unter den is like under the... Some sort of under the... I guess if it's under, under the Stadt, it'd be under the city, but... What does Linden mean? <laughs> Look at this picture. So just on our way to the piece of the Berlin Wall now. Just got a train here. And uh, yeah, man, one thing I will say about Berlin is that the train system is fantastic. Like if you miss a train, there probably will be another train that gets you to where you need to be moments later. Now, it's not so bad in London. In London, the transport's relatively decent. Um, pretty regular to be fair. But in Peterborough, so where from it's not so good if you miss your bus you wait in 20 minutes and sometimes that bus is delayed as well so one thing i really do like about well to be honest uh, i would say germany austria switzerland is the punctuality of the transport it's really good and one thing i've also noticed as well is how it's a very progressive city like you've got a mixture of people from all parts of the world and uh different languages accents styles of dress it seems like a place where you can really be yourself and not get judged and uh london kind of has a similar vibe to that though not everywhere of course but in most parts of london with it being quite, quite a progressive city as well you can be as you wish whereas when we was back in poland um in certain parts at least in smaller areas because obviously i've got quite a few tattoos i'd get a lot of uh, side eyes from the elderly um, kind of expected but uh, yeah you don't get that as much here which is quite nice but uh, yeah we're just making our way over now and uh, this is a typical street scene that you'll see and again because we're staying outside of the tourist area thank thankfully because it's very touristy in certain parts because we're staying out them areas primarily because we're cheapskates and primarily, primarily because we like to explore a slice of the culture with the people We'll give you a bit more of an insight into that in our next video but interestingly enough as well the place that we've rented is the cheapest apartment in berlin at least according to airbnb but there you go look, look at this lots of uh lots of graffiti and lots of uh lots of lots of signs of uh youths doing their thing look even the uh, even the vehicles <laughs> even they're uh you know not safe so, not far from the wall now. Beautiful sunny day. Might need the shades. Let's get there. Let's see what it's like. So here it is, a section of the Berlin Wall. Crazy. I've seen this so many times in, you know, literature, in film, in documentaries. And never did I think that I'd be still here, looking at it. And indeed, touching it. It's just crazy to think that a piece of such an incredible, unfathomable history is right here in front of me. You know, it's, it's almost un unfathomable. You know, I've heard so much about this over my lifetime and yet, you know, it was demolished by the time I was born. But this is such a, uh, you know, such an incredible monument to what the city once was and what it is now. And indeed, if you're interested, you can pause here for information. I'll pan down slowly so you can have a look. So if you can't make it here, you can have a little look. And of course, there is also some information here you can read as well if you're curious. I'm hoping it's uh, focusing. If it's not, I do apologize. 
and uh, this explains how there you go the Soviet side let me just flip this so I can make sure that you're getting good focus so it explains how the east was held by the Soviets and then this section here was held by the Americans this section here by the British or the English or the British because the United Kingdom and then France so four sections which was eventually divided by a wall just here which we see right in front of us oh hello Tom <laughs> you're right <clears throat> so crazy crazy to think that this is the history and uh this is a list of all the graves here as well and uh just a quick thing i just read that over there if you point your camera that way this where way? see where all the brickwork is there mm -hmm. that used to be like a guard tower oh interesting oh i didn't know that so as tammy's just pointed out i don't know if you heard it but this used to be a guard tower this uh Actually, piece of wall Oh, Kyle. Kyle. There you go, Kyle with the history there. Thank you, Kyle. So, we'll uh, walk over to what used to be part of a guard tower, which kept watch on this wall oh, wow. to make sure that people were kept in line and they were kept on their part of the wall. And uh, it's crazy to think that this city was split in two. Now, I can't walk over here because this is a memorial. I don't want to desecrate that, but here you can see what used to be a section of the wall which would have housed the guard tower. Oh, and this is where the guard tower used to be, right here. Absolutely crazy. And this is where it would have lied, and they would have been here, and there would have been a sprawling tower here, and they would have been keeping watch over there to make sure that nobody was trying to escape or trying to uh, get away from their part uh, from the part of the city they should have been in. So crazy, crazy history. And uh, it's, it's very harrowing to witness it myself, but uh, we're going to keep pushing forward and seeing what else is around and seeing uh, what we can explore. What really surprises me already, now we're on the east side, is how you can see the Soviet influence in the buildings. So the buildings are quite brutalist in their architecture. Whereas earlier, when we was in the west side of the city, it was, uh, the buildings were completely different. It was, you know, a lot more grandiose. Whereas this is a lot more akin to the Soviet architecture that you would see. So that's another quite interesting thing about Berlin is that you actually have a variety of influences. You have the British rule, the French rule, the, uh, yeah, the um, American section that was being ruled over, the USFA. Uh, you have the Soviets. And so really, each piece of the city, and of course, the German people themselves, and there's a blend of all of their influences in this very place. And everywhere you turn, you literally see it. Now, as you saw, we went to the Berlin Wall itself. There is a memorial a little bit over here. And as we trace against this wall here, we find ourselves on what is part of the city which again, completely different to what we've seen already. You know, throughout this video, we've seen the transformation of the architecture throughout the whole place. And for someone who's really interested in the history and architecture of a place, to see it evolve so quickly before your very eyes, from the, the old historic buildings to the more brutalist Soviet-style buildings, is actually very, very interesting to witness because it happens so suddenly. And so, as a result, you can really see the influence that each of the people that, or each of the countries that led the city at some point has had on the place. And indeed, you can see it in the culture, the art, and the buildings. So, and again, we turn a corner and we see this grand church just here. And that's what I mean. So you've got the brutalist architecture and then you've got the more grandiose church. And that's what I mean. It's a very much an evolving city. You turn a corner, and something new is right before your eyes. So, so far, really enjoying Berlin. The people, it's very interesting actually. So, I read somewhere that from all of Germany, the Berlin, the Berliners, the people of Berlin are known to be the least friendliest. I've not experienced that at all. Everyone's been very friendly, and like everywhere in Germany, the English is spoken very well. So as soon as I open my mouth and start speaking and they hear my terrible pronunciation of the German language, they're like, ah, 
let's give this guy a hand and speak English. And uh, that's very much appreciated because my German uh, only, only goes so far to uh, brief conversations about the weather. And this is heiss. You can see the, uh, you can see the sun up there. And it was uh, cold. Es war kalt, 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 kalt. And even Tammy, she's been learning the German language with me. And uh, you did a bit of ordering, didn't you? Okay. How would you say, can I have two cups of tea? Ich schmuck zwei Tasse Tee. Ich schmuck zwei Tasse Tee? Richtig. Correct. So again, I do apologise to my German brethren. If I'm butchering your language, I don't mean to. I just love the language and how it sounds. But it's not spoken very well by me. But I do love hearing people speak it. And I do, I do love trying to pick out words that I understand. Although there's not many. But... Anyway, let's keep moving forward and see what this memorial looks like. So it turns out that we're only seeing a small section of the wall. And if you look here, you can see a line where this wall would have ended just here, which is now the Nordbahnhof, the North Railway Station. I believe that's what that means. And uh, I won't walk on this, uh, on this just in case. <laughs> but as you can see here, there is a, another section of the wall and indeed there is a, uh, a little layout of the city and what it would have looked like. So here behind me you can see a larger piece of the wall that we were looking at earlier which extends quite a Excuse bit me. further back. Speak English. Yes I speak English, yes. Oh no 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 that's not good. You shouldn't be doing that. You should not be doing that. That's bad. That's scamming. Bad. That's is schlecht. Nine. Right, don't fall for that, guys. That's a scam, basically. So what she's doing is she's walking around with a clipboard, asking people if uh, they will donate to her charity. And as you can see, she's got no lanyard, nothing like that. And she just accosts tourists. And she asks them to sign, and then she'll start buttering them up. And, uh, you know, trying to... And you saw, as soon as she realised that I knew what she was up to, she was scarfering. And you've got to, you've got to be, you've got to be stern, guys. You can't let them trick you. You know, the people that are doing that stuff are doing it in a place like this with such history, and they dare do it to people, you know, that are just coming to experience the history themselves, but don't fall for it. So to explain, because this happened earlier, to explain what happened basically is that they will come up to you with a clipboard and they claim to be a part of a charity of sorts. Uh, in my case earlier, it was a deafblind charity. And uh, they'll start talking to you, they'll start buttering you up and they'll start being like, oh, yes, yes, yeah, like, oh, you're, you're so, to, to tell me earlier, oh, you're so pretty, you're so, you're so wonderful. Oh, England, the best country in the world. And then once they've buttered you up sufficiently enough, and you can see, look, she's at it over here. And hopefully these guys don't fall for it. So, Hopefully they don't, but basically what happens is she will ask you to sign a petition, but you're not just signing, you're actually donating. And it's like, where's your badge? Well, you know, you're doing this in the name of Deafblind Charity and you're taking money off people. And I can guarantee you, you saw her scarper, guys. I mean, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments, but she was definitely trying to scam people. And she's looking for an area where tourists all flock. So this city, it really does, uh, it's, it's hard to explain, but it's, you know, it's such a, an incredible atmosphere wherever you walk. Um, but unfortunately, you know, over time, you know, um, with, with the level of tourism that it, it kind of experiences now, you know, tourism is always going to breed, um, you know, some sort of a scam. And charity scams seem to be one of the more common scams I'm seeing here now, obviously, I'm a bit more alert to it because you know I've experienced a lot of them over my time and uh, you just need to be aware someone's coming up to you asking you for uh, you know a donation to something for the very least you want to see if they have some sort of a badge or an ID to prove that they're with a, a recognized charity and even if they do you want to probably probe a little bit further because there's probably a little bit more to it than meets the eye um, you know you've got to think registered charities don't operate on those kind of on that basis you know um 
and you've almost got to be uh, slightly aware no passage to the Berlin Wall Memorial interesting I don't know if that means I can't enter at all but I can see people over there so I'm gonna enter in and there's just basic rules so please behave quietly do not am I allowed to film no loud music okay just checking the rules guys so I'm gonna show you around here and uh, of course whilst I'm doing it pay as much respect as I can I'm not gonna go hovering around someone's grave to show you but you can see it's a very peaceful area and those that are interred here are interred in what is quite a beautiful area but um yeah Berlin so far I'm really enjoying it but it's very sad to see the level of scammers and people begging or trying to get money out of tourists and of course those who are a little bit less uh, a little bit less familiar with these kind of scams will fall for them so uh, hopefully videos like this does some sort of uh, education pieces to people that need it because uh, I can tell you when I first started traveling I fell for quite a few of them myself you know you see someone with a big smile and they're buttering you up and telling you how great and beautiful your country is and you want to you know they're forming a mini bond with you and uh, they're really really doing it for their own gain so you've got to be aware of that but here we can see the area and uh, it's just harrowing to think that this is a place which uh, Hold so much history yet at the same time is uh, also very you know um, very much part of our current history you know seeing it and and knowing what it represents so uh, it's crazy to be here again very very sad to see that it's uh, become blighted with scammers but it is what it is guys uh, so that's 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 how it is you know you've just got to be aware but Hopefully this has been useful and informative. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed seeing Berlin or pieces of it. I'm gonna try and do a few videos from Berlin because there's so much to cover that, uh, you know, you need to see it for yourself really. But hopefully this uh, this video is showing you a little bit about what kind of scams exist and uh, how to potentially avoid them. But I think really a stern word and saying no to someone's face and uh, making it very clear that you're not, uh, you know, you're not interested is a good start but anyway i just want to say thank you for watching this video i really do appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch through and hopefully you've enjoyed it and please do keep your eyes peeled for the next one where we'll be looking around Berlin a little bit more and learning a bit more about what the city has to offer so catch you very soon people take care